Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to the United Stands. I'm Mark Goldbridge and this is your latest Manchester United news as major developments occur in the transfer scenario situation master plan for Ineos to Jim Radcliffe and Manchester United. Big comings, big goings, big budgets and how they're going to raise them. We'll be talking about that. Also, how Manchester United can apparently qualify for the Champions League even if they finish sixth. It's a little bit far-fetched but no more far-fetched than Jack getting on that door with Rose at the end of Titanic, which I think he could have done. I'll stand by it forever. But look, lots to get into as well as Real Madrid sniffing around another young Manchester United player and uh, the Ten Hag debate rolls on as well. Lots to get into on the show this evening. Of course, we're early because it's Champions League night where I'll be doing a watch along on that's football. So a little bit early tonight. But what is always a staple of a Tuesday night show is a bit of a trivia for you before we get into the news. Because we're sponsored by Boohoo Man, you can get 20%, sorry, not 20%, you can get 10% off with the code Goldbridge. What is Boohoo Man? Well, I'm wearing some of their brilliant clothing now. Reasonably priced products you can get gym, wear, fiber side wear, lounge wear, the lot wear, and 10% off with the code Goldbridge on already reasonable, fantastic products. So check out the link in the description or scan the QR code with your camera phone right next to me there. 10% um, off with your code Goldbridge. And if they've already got discounts on the site, like, you know, for 30%, you can add the 10% on top with the code Goldbridge. So it's a discount on a discount, if that makes sense. So if you fancy getting yourself some nice and stylish clothes, get ahead with the code and use the scan, scan QR code next to me or go through the link in the description. And as it is a Boohoo Man uh, integration, then we also have a bit of Boohoo Man trivia for you. Can you guess this Manchester United player? I was born on April the 28th, 1988. I signed for United in January 2014 for a then club record of £37.1 million. During my time at United, I played 196 games, scoring 34 goals. For Manchester United, I won the FA Cup, the League Cup and the Europa League. And for Spain, I won the World Cup and the European Championship. You must know it now. I left United in 2022 to join Gallagher Tassarai, and I didn't know this, he's currently playing in Japan. Um, I didn't know he'd gone there, but what a lovely guy he is, and he's going to go for um, Wan Mata. That is who it is. So if you've got that in the chat, well done. I think you should have got it on the Spain World Cup wins, but a lot of people have gone with Mata there. Some people still go with Nani. It's a bit of a joke, but there we go. Well done, and big shout out to Boohoo Man for that. Right, uh, let's go into the show. So lots to talk about today. Beth was live earlier as John Murta exits the club. If you've not heard about that, he's left this week. He will leave Manchester United. And what does this mean for Manchester United's summer transfer window? Well, hot off the press, John Murta is gone. Dan Ashworth is not expected to be here this summer. At the moment... Sir Jim Ineos are not confident he's going to be here this summer. So technically, it leaves us without a director of football. But this is not something we figured out amongst the fans. This is something Ineos are ready for as well. We're also going to be talking about this Champions League scenario if we finish sixth in a couple of minutes as well. But let's delve into the latest news around the director of football. So as things stand, Manchester United don't have a director of football. John Mert is about to leave. Dan Ashworth will not be here for the summer. So what they're looking at doing is using Barada... Who, is on, who can't actually start his job until June, um, although apparently Man City are aware of his involvement in doing stuff and aren't that bothered, so I don't think that's a massive issue. And Wilcox, who's not here yet. Um, it's a little bit chaotic. Um, it is chaotic. If they'd gone for someone like Paul Mitchell, he'd have been in place for a two months already and we'd be a lot better prepared. But Ineos are adamant that they get the people they want, even if, they're, even if it damages or hinders or delays. So Barada comes in in the summer. Dan Ashworth comes in sometime between the summer and Christmas. And Jason Wilcox hopefully comes in the next few weeks. Um, it's not the ideal preparation for the summer transfer window, if I'm being honest. But on the other hand, Murta running as director of football into a summer where he's not going to be director of football next season is also, if we're being honest, a little bit arse around face, if we're being if we're being completely fair. So look, the changes are happening. They're a little bit slow, but um, the changes are happening. Now, look, what we have to take into account here is that Ineos aren't just making these changes and leaving us wide open. Ineos aren't just making these changes and leaving us in a position where we're, we're weakened. They're trying to make us stronger. 
and hot off the press as well, they are looking to raise £150 million that they can utilise in this summer transfer window in addition to whatever budget would normally be available. Now, we believe that our normal budget is somewhere between £75 and £100 million and Ineos are sure they can raise another £150 which will take our budget to well over £200 million, maybe something like £250 which will allow us to bring four or five good players in and the more the merrier, let's be honest. So how are they going to raise this money? How are we going to have this big summer with big signings by selling players and the plan as things stand at the moment are Greenwood goes out of the club for 40 million Casemiro goes out of the club for 30 million he's still got a value obviously in Saudi Arabia are interested and Aaron Wambasaka goes out for about 30 million pounds as well so that's a hundred million pounds raised off those three players Martial will go, leaving £8 million in wages. Varane will go, leaving £14 million in wages across a year. That's another £22 million, which makes £122 million. You've then got Ericsson, where they think they can raise another five, plus his wages takes it up to £130, leaving a £20 million deficit from £130 to £150, which they're confident they can sell Maguire, McTominay, Sancho or Lindelof to make up so one of those players would go so Ineos are confident that they can raise 150 million pounds plus whatever the budget would normally be under the Glazers so look they feel that without Murta and without Ashworth they still have enough quality within the club including their opinion to get through a summer transfer window in a positive way they feel that as long as the budget's there they can work their way through the summer transfer window with what they've got by others stepping up, Wilcox ste stepping in and Barada stepping in. That is the belief of Ineos with the experience that they bring to the table with people like Blanc, Brailsford and obviously Sir Jim himself and whoever the manager's going to be. So they feel that as long as there's a good budget there, they can bring players in. They can take players out and they can improve across the summer for next season, whatever scenario, even if it's without Dan Ashworth or John Murta staying. Um, Concrete Life says, but who's buying the players, Mark? Well, I, you know, it's a good question. Jason Wilcox we, we, is Southampton's director of football. It's a big step up in a very quick period. It's, you know, we're, we're heading towards halfway through April. Barada has done deals with Man City and will have good connections, but how quickly can he get involved in that? Do we have to wait until June? There are people within the club to step up, but, you know, these are people that have been here for a few years. Um, but look, I must say, it's better to have a, a big budget and people who need to step up than having brilliant recruiters and no budget. So, look, I think what Ineos are trying to do is run as quick as they can with what they've got because football stands still for nobody but they're trying to do it in a way where you know it's not the ideal but they hope that by next summer everything will be in place they'll have the CEO they'll have the recruitment team they'll have the director of football so look that that's where we're sort of heading at the moment there is a belief that they can generate a big transfer budget that is sufficient to hit the transfer window with you'll notice that there's a lot of players that aren't going to be moved out of the club I mean Look, the, the main players that look like they're going are Greenwood, Casemiro, Varane, Wambasaka, and then you make it up, they make they make the rest up with the likes of Ericsson, Martial, Donny, and maybe one from McTominay, McTom uh, McTominay, Maguire, Sancho, and Lindelof. So you know it, that, that that's just how it is. Uh, Robbie says it's pure speculation. Welcome to the world of football, mate. Nothing's set in stone till it happens. It was speculative that John Murta was going to go at Christmas and lo and behold, he's gone before the end of the season. So if you don't understand football, mate, you know where the door is. Um, um, Ineos got to sack Ten Hag and here's the reason. If Ten Hag is the manager, those players will down tools and get him sacked, meaning an interim from December, says John. That doesn't make any sense, John. You need to think more about what you're writing. Evening, Mark. Happy, happy belated uh, birthday from the weekend. Just hoping we can get strong uh, and so Ten Hag stays. Big up United stand. Hope the family as well. Thank you very much, AMG. Um... Uh, Chris says, I'm fine with Barada running the, wind, uh, the window. He has plenty of experience, uh, certainly. Um, but look, I suppose it how, it's quick, it's how quick he can get in. Uh, Var Vari Varia says, Goldbridge, are there any chances... Um, are there any chances of Greenwood coming back to United? Also, Wilcox and Ashworth are both directors of football. How can United have two directors of football? No. 
Wilcox is director of football at Southampton. He'll be technical director at Manchester United and Ashworth will be the uh, director of football. Of course, Darren Fletcher is our current technical director and uh, John Murtagh is leaving as our director of football. So that's, you know, basically Wilcox will take Fletcher's position. Ashworth will take Murtagh's position. Fletcher is expected to stay. They're going to try and find him a new role. Um, are there any... Uh, I've read that one before. Uh, ain't no way Ashworth ain't working off the books already, says Nathan. Wow. Nathan, we've spoken about this so many times. I don't know what you understand about breaches of contract and being sued and that costing us millions of pounds. If Dan Ashworth's working for us, he better have a bloody good burner phone because if he gets caught on any email or any conversation or any meeting, we will get sued and we will get fined big time. So, you know, all these prats out there that think Dan Ashworth's there sending emails to fucking players and agents negotiating deals, which is his job as a director of football, is a bloody idiot. Um, even if he is sending carrier pigeons to Carrington and then, you know, Sir Jim Radcliffe's opening them up and then eating the evidence, we're still not got a director of football. A director of football's job is not to sit at home sending notes on a pigeon saying, buy Atalanta's Edison. That's not a director of football's job. A director of football's job is to negotiate and, you know, decide who's being sold and bought. He definitely is not doing that. He can't. If he gets caught, we're in trouble. Um, what's your thoughts on Pep benching Kevin De Bruyne tonight? I don't care, Rahul. That's for something else. And uh, Fletcher's living the good life since time's end. I would keep Warren Bissaka as a backup defender, says David. Well, I mean, to be honest, David, I don't massively care what you would do. And, and, and you should care what I would do. What I'm telling you is what Man United are going to do because they need to generate money. And on the one hand, you've got people saying sack Ten Hag and they've got absolutely no idea who we'll end up with, which is Southgate. And then on the other end, on the other side, you've got people saying, I wouldn't sell Casemiro, I wouldn't sell wan Saka, I wouldn't sell Greenwood. And then suddenly you sit there and go, you do realise we've got no fucking budget for the summer then. Like, there's some harsh realities. I'm not. I will be cynical. I will be and hold Ineos accountable at every step of the way because I think we need to do that. But I also will be realistic. And what I do not like is people saying, well, you know what? What a stupid move letting Murta go and we've got no director of football for the summer. If we'd got Paul Mitchell, then we'd have one. But they want Ashworth. And I actually, I actually think Murta going before the window is a good thing. I think it's a bad thing, John Murta being involved in the summer transfer window because the last two have been in a nightmare and they've not gone well. And also, he's not part of the future plans. So I'd rather we try to navigate this summer transfer window with Barada, Wilcox and people stepping up than Murta being involved when we know he's going to go anyway. So I won't be critical of them on that. And also, I won't be critical of them selling somebody like wan who has a value that we could do without. Like, we need to generate money. You're telling me you'd keep wan as a backup right-back instead of having £30 million to go towards centre-backs, strikers. We need to generate some funds. Um, and the funny thing is, as well, is you get people saying, I won't sell this, I won't sell that, I won't sell this. And then they're moaning about the fact that we are a team that struggles with the same players not having the mentality and the consistency. Personally, I'd probably sell 15 players if I could. We, we were not going to do it. But I, I, if I... Look, I don't think people understand this, but I will say it. I like people like Bruno Fernandes. I like people like Rashford. But if you're telling me I can do something completely unrealistic, I can change 15 players in one summer transfer window, I'll do it. I'll do it. It wouldn't just be the Casemiro's, the Greenwood's, the Sancho's, the Donny's, the Martial's, the Brandon Williams going... It would also be the Maguires, the McTominays, the Brunos, the Rashfords. I'd, I'd clear 15 out. I'd get rid of every semblance of the last three years. Anybody that played under Ollie, pretty much you're all gone. Because I just need a, I, I genuinely just need a reset. And, and, and I wish you all the best where you go. And I think you will do well elsewhere. But I actually am just grabbing the router getting the little pencil and sticking the button in on the reset button. I'd love to do that. It's, it's completely unrealistic. It's idiotic. It's stupid. But if I could, I would. And I'd be looking to do that over the next two to three years because I think the club needs a reset. I think it needs an absolute reset. And the players that I would be building under is, obviously, you've got to work with this goalkeeper. Delo, I'd work with. Um, Kaz um, Kobe Mainu. Rasmus, Ganacho, Mason Mount, 
and a couple of others. And, but you know, we're not going to do that. Do you think Murta taking the fall for Ten Hag says Nomad? Uh, no, I don't think I don't think so. Muzza says happy 50th mark. Bissed it past weekend. Also, if we were to win all our remaining games, do you think we'd get top four? No. And hi, Mark. You said there is a way of us getting Champions League, but is it realistic? I'm going to talk about that in a minute, uh, personally. Um, also, Sam, Sil says, uh, Sam Hull says, I feel until we can accept these big name players, including Rashford, need to go, and we need to bring in players with a certain mindset, not just football ability, we won't be successful, says Sam. Thank you very much. Well, I want to talk a little bit about that in a moment, but I know a lot of people are waiting patiently here about the Champions League thing. So look, this, look, don't shoot the messenger. Pigeon. I'm a carrier pigeon. Who would have thought pigeons would get so much mention on this show tonight? Um, I read this and I've read it on four different news outlets. Manchester United can finish sixth and get Champions League football. Do not get overexcited. The scenario is not far-fetched, but it ain't going to happen. So basically, and I, I don't really understand this, but Basically, um, BC says, are you rooting for Arsenal to help England's UEFA coefficient? Mate, makes no difference. It's like that's only a fifth available. We're not getting fifth. If we finish sixth, we can get Champions League football, apparently, if West Ham finish fifth and win the Europa League. I, 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 look, I'm only, I'm only, pa I'm only ca passing on what's been written today. If West Ham win the Europa League... And they finish fifth and we finish sixth. We will go into the Champions League next year. I don't know how it works. I don't know why it works. But apparently that is the case. So if, if West Ham win the Europa League and finish above us and we finish sixth, then we would be in. But I don't know how that works. No, it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. I've just realised. I was being thick. I was thinking if they finish sixth and we finish seventh. Yeah, this is never going to happen then because that would mean Villa or Spurs have got. Oh, stupid. It's an, it's, it's not. There's less than a. There's no chance of that. There's more chance of uh, Luton winning the Premier League. There's. I've just realised. There's no. You know what? I actually. Oh God. I've, I've just wasted two minutes of my life and yours. So basically. If West Ham finish fifth and we finish sixth and they win the Europa League, we we can go into the Champions League. But one of Villa and Spurs have got to disappear without a trace. You know, they've got to go Titanic, haven't they? So, yeah, it does make sense. It would work, but it can't happen. I was thinking if we finish seventh and they finish sixth and win the Europa League. No, no, this this can't happen. The, 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 no, it's a waste of time. We move on. Would be Moyes' greatest achievement for United ever... Yeah, but the, the problem is what happens to Villa or Spurs? Like this is this just doesn't make make any sense. Doesn't make any sense at all, does it? Let's move on. Let's move on. Um so yes, look, murta has gone. I think that in my mind is 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 a good thing. Um Dan Ashworth probably not gonna be here ahead of the summer. Wilcox will be, Barada will be, and I suppose the interesting thing is gonna be what Man United tr decide to do. Uh, in this summer transfer window and how they decide to do it. Um, there has been... T look, I can't really... It, it's ridiculously speculative to say what we're going to do with certain players. Um, what I really find interesting, and I don't think we... What I find really interesting, and I sort of know the answer, is that imagine... A, so, let me think how I, I, how I explain this to you good people. Okay, so... We've got no director of football for this summer transfer window. Um, people have got to step up. We've got a new CEO. We've got a new technical director. One's coming from Man City. One's coming from Southampton. They've got to step in and hit the ground running. They don't even know if they can work together. Although I think they do know each other because Wilcox was at Man City. So they've probably got similar sort of ideas. Um, Ashworth won't be there. murta has gone. They've got to hit the ground running with probably a fairly decent budget. On top of that, we might change the manager as well. Crazy. I, I, I mean, I, if I'm Ineos, I'm, I, I'm desperately seeking stability in some way, shape or form because it's the most unstable 
way to walk into a summer transfer window. It's great to have a budget, but to not have a director of football, a brand, C brand new CEO and a brand new technical director, and then a brand new manager as well, you are potentially, well, well who are you talking to? That, that's the thing. Who are you? Who, who's making the decision on the bar? But then this is what we're talking about, isn't it? This is what leads me to believe Ineos have decided to implement something nobody's done successfully in the English game. We're going to run the football club and put a puppet manager in place who's just basically there to coach the players with the players that we provide. We want to implement a Brighton system here. Now, apparently, Ashworth wasn't that happy at Newcastle because he didn't have the control that he had at Brighton. So uh, the hints are there. Like, Barada and Ashworth are going to run this football club and decide on the players, and the manager's just going to be a puppet. Now, you know, that, that, well, that could well be Ten Hag, but... If it's Gareth Southgate or, or Graham Potter, who are we actually talking to this summer? Who are we actually going to bring in? Because it's one thing having a budget. It's another thing having a new CEO and a new technical director and not having a director of football in place. But it's an even another thing to have a brand new manager. And, you know, what, what I want to understand is if, if, if Barad is the CEO and Wilcox is the technical director but Southgate is the manager, those three people don't have the same philosophy. Like Barada's from Man City, Wilcox is from Southampton and Man City, and Southgate is from the, the 1980s. You know, Jurassic Park football. So they don't even work. So what if Barada goes and gets like technical footballers and then gives them to Southgate? Like he won't know what to do. He'll be like, where's Calvin Phillips? Where's Jordan Henderson? So I don't, I don't really... The thing that intrigues me is what players are we talking to? Because we are talking to players. Who are we talking to? Defensively, I know we're talking to Branthwaite and Sadibo, and I know that we've had talks with Elisi, but who else are we talking to? And on whose who say so? So it is interesting. It is very interesting. And I, I just personally think it's another reason why you would keep Ten Hag around for another year because at least you've got somebody in place who can tell you these players I think need to go and these are the sort of players we need to bring in and my philosophy is very... I mean, Ten Hag's philosophy will be very similar to Barada's at Man City. They'll, they'll, they'll have a similarity, way more similar. Look, Ten Hag's style of football is way more similar to what Barada's used to than what Southgate was, would be. So, I mean, I don't know. I, well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, hi, Mark. Just a quick one. I thought Fabrizio said that Wilcox resigned from Southampton. So why do we need to pay them compensation? Am I just stupid? Because um, you can't just do that. Uh, you can't just... Uh, you can't just... Um, you can't just resign and go, I'm resigning. Oh, I've got a new job at a better place. There's compensation. Um, it'd be like... It'd be like um, somebody like... Um, trying to think of a prime footballer be like Declan Rice saying to Arsenal I'm retiring and then the next day he starts playing for Man United you know there's got to be you know common sense compensation in there what about if Liverpool win the Europa League says Killian Doyle um I don't know no. If Frimpong stays at Leverkusen when they win the league or if another club buys him, what right back would you want? Also, left back signing you want this summer, says Ross. I don't know. I'm not the director of football and I don't go around doing that. I think it's a waste of time. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to talk about other people's ideas, but I, I, I stopped doing that a long time ago. I don't go around going, there's a left back in Germany. We should buy him because it's irrelevant. It doesn't make any sense. I know some of you enjoy doing that, but I, I, I follow the news. I, fo I follow what I get told. I don't follow what I think because they won't listen and I'm not employed by Manchester United. So, you know, if I say this is the striker to go and get or this is the left back to go and get, I'm not going to waste my time. I don't know who United are scouting at left back, so I'm not going to start scouting left backs. Right backs, um, I, I mean, I personally think Fr Frimpong is the one to go and get. That's I, I don't really have any thoughts on anybody else hi mark uh we've done that one thank you very much would be yeah i've done that one as well how much compensation do we need to get to, to pay to get ash within before the summer and would it be worth paying well it's two and a half months of negotiations so far um newcastle obviously aren't messing about but obviously in the meantime i don't think newcastle have appointed their director of football either so i, I look I, I look at the ashworth situation and i find it really baffling um I mean, basically, by the time it hits the start of the transfer window in June, 
it will be February, March, April, May, June, five months, um, five months of um, him not working for Newcastle, which is nearly half a year. So I don't, I don't really understand how it benefits anybody other than it seems to me like it's become a bit of a power play. And we, we heard Sir Jim Radcliffe talking about it two months ago and he was very frustrated. So, But but is it not damaging Newcastle now? Who's their director of football when they haven't got Dan Ashworth? They're going into it. I mean, not Newcastle have had a worse season than us. So how is it benefit, benefiting Newcastle play, being stubborn? You're going to lose Dan Ashworth anyway. He's going to be at Man United at some point. Um, surely it's better for everybody to move on. But uh, obviously they want money for it as well. Um, excited for City Madrid. Hope we absolutely batter City, says Kieran. This gardening leave is disgraceful, says Taron. I think gardening leave in football is, isn't is disgraceful, to be honest. I think it's absolutely essential. You know, you don't want Ten Hag or, uh, you know, leaving in February to go and manage Bayern Munich. That that's You have to have these things in place. But um, I just think that, you know, that, that, that there is a... We, we want Dan Ashworth in place for Mar for May, really, don't we? Um, I think if that can happen, that's absolutely fine. But look, I, I did hope that we could just give Newcastle 10 million and he could start straight away. But that, obviously that's not happened. Um, a few people have mentioned it in the chat. Completely agree. I know Beth was talking about it earlier. There's a really good clip that's gone out from a couple of years ago about um, how Rude Hullet... I mean, I'd love to see this sort of happen in the Premier League. Best league in the world. And um, we don't have this. So basically, it was a bit of a round table with a studio audience with uh, Rude Hullet and a couple of other people. And Ted Hag was there. And they're literally picking apart everybody's uh, formations and what works and what, should, what doesn't work. And effectively, um, Rude Hullet was sort of criticising how Ten Hag's Ajax can get countered and overloaded when things don't work. Um and Ten Hag was saying, well, but, but uh, you know, Ten Hag was basically saying, but this is how I want to play. And it does work because we have had some really good results in the Champions League and also we keep winning the Eredivisie. So it does work. Um, and also it's about having the players to play the system. You've got to be brave. You've got to be good on the ball. You've got to be energetic. Um, and it's interesting because I and many others have said that, like, especially in recent weeks, and, and for all this season, to be honest with you, if you think about... I remember it happening against Wolves. And I, and, and I I was like, what the fuck's going on? We did it against Wolves. And, and at times, we were playing with a back three. I think it was Varane, Martinez, Casemiro on the opening day. And everybody else was high up the pitch. And I was like, what's going on here? I, I, I don't understand what's going on. And then you look at it and you go, well, actually, I, I can see what's going on here because this is the way that he wants to play and this is the way that Ajax plays. The reason it looks so bad at times and the reason we get overloaded so so much is because the players that we have technically can't do it. So it's a problem. That's the problem. Um, I think if we had the right players, then we would be able to play the way Ten Hag wants to play and it would be very, very good. I mean, if you imagine what we're trying to do, we're trying to press high up the pitch and dominate the ball and dominate the possession. Um, and then when we get broken upon, we need energetic players who can get back quickly. The problem we've got is we've got players who can't keep hold of the ball, so we lose the ball. And then we've got players who can't get back, so we get overwhelmed. He, he needs the players to do it. And and the funny thing is, I mean, just Keevan says it's chaotic football. It's not if you've got the right players. Ajax dominated te most teams with 70% possession. It works if you've got people who can keep hold of the ball and are technical, but we don't have that. It works if you've got people who are energetic and can, and can get back consistently, but we don't have that. So the answer to the question is go out and buy those players or get a manager in like Thomas Frank or Gareth Southgate and park the bloody bus. Because that's what our players can do. That's what Solskjaer did. That's what Mourinho did. So, um, if you want to see good football at Man United, whether it's with Ten Hag or somebody else, we need to bring a lot of players in. If you want to see Park the Bus football, we're probably halfway there. Because a lot of these players are that. But it was very, very interesting. Um, what's the news about Mainu to Real Madrid, says Kian. Oh, yeah, there was... Um, there was a story today uh, from Spain that uh, Real Madrid are looking at Kobe Mainu. Um, 
I'm glad you mentioned it because I'd like, you know, I'm happy to talk about it. But I think that um, I'm not bothered. Like, he's not, it's not going to happen this summer. It's not going to ne happen next summer. What will happen is in two or three years, if we continue to be shit and Kobe Mainu continues to be good, he will just say at some point, you you know, I, I'm um, my ambitions outmatch yours. Uh, Real Madrid want me. I want to go. Um, that will happen. Just because he's English doesn't mean it won't happen. Gone are the days where Skulls and everyone else like that used to turn down big clubs because we, we could provide them with the platform they want. If Man United can't provide it and Maynou goes to the level we think he can, he'll go. But I'm quite comfortable with that because if we can't provide these players with the the platform to realise their ambitions, then we have to sell them and let them go to places that they can. That's the challenge. Um, and of course Real Madrid are looking at Kobe Maynou. They'll be looking at a lot of talented players. They'll be looking at Ganacho. Of course they will. I'm I'm not worried about that. He's not going this summer. He's not going next summer. We need to pro we need to provide these players with the platform to be the best players in the world and win the best tri trophies in the world. And if we can't do that, then eventually we will go. Uh, Gary on players under Ali. They haven't got a style. They rely on individual brilliance, but wouldn't put it down on Ali. Now asks about play styles as Mario. Yeah, well we we, we blew the doors off that this morning, didn't we? <laughs> Actually, uh, blew them off. Do you any? Do you in any way believe Ineos went Southgate? Says United 2004. I believe in every way they like Southgate and are talking about Southgate. Yes, 100%. Um, if Ten Hag gets sacked, Chelsea will be all over it and he'd work great at developing their young squad, says who to blame. Um, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I really don't know about that. Anyway, it's only a quick show tonight and that, that show's flown by. How have we done? 31 minutes. It feels like I've been live for about 11. Don't even know how we've done that. Uh, Champions League is upon us very quickly. I need to get live in like seven minutes. So it's over on That's Football. I'll push you over there. Don't forget Boohoo Man. Get you 10% off with the code Goldbridge. Get some lovely clobber like this. And I'll see you over on That's Football for the watch along in about five minutes time. Take care. Speak to you in a bit.